from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering Console Connect Live 2015, sponsored by Console. Here's your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back, everyone. We are live in San Francisco for Console Connect 2015. This is the Cube Silicon Angles flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angles. Show. Jeff Frick, general manager of the Cube. Our next guest is Shafiq Peck, lead engineer, uh, network engineer at Zendesk. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you. Thanks for so, having me. So, lead network engineer means you're the chief firefighter, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or, uh, amongst other things. Yeah. <laughs> um, SaaS, obviously the cloud, yes. changing everyone's business models. A lot of stuff going on. SDN, a lot of transformation, DevOps, applications being deployed, API, vacation. Yeah. All that stuff, we, you know, we cover that all day long. But there's a lot of underlying plumbing that yes. needs to get you know, re, re-platformed. Talk about some of the issues and, and what's going on at this event and why is this event so important in terms of this new next generation internet? Uh, well, uh, because it has nothing to do with the internet, uh, frankly. So everyone knows, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, um, malicious activity out on the internet, right? And so when you're trying to run a business on the internet, uh, you know, a lot of that, um, uh, you, you're constantly in the back of your mind worrying about that malicious activity and when you're finally going to be targeted for it. And, it, and it's certainly not a, an issue of uh, if, it's, it's definitely an issue of when. Um, so basically, the, the reason that we're here is because we, you know, we definitely recognize there's an importance in uh, you know, bypassing the internet and staying connected with your customers and also the applications that you use. Um, and so the, the importance of this particular conference is it encompasses uh, the importance of peering directly from business to business uh, you know, at the network layer. And so, you know, any any chance that you're you're able to connect uh, directly with with the businesses that either uh, you, you need to run your company or the uh, other businesses that utilize your your particular applications, um, you know, it, it's definitely it's definitely a win. You know, be, like like I said, uh, the internet's kind of the wild wild west. You know, and when when you are a target for you know whether you're a direct target or just uh, collateral damage of an attack. It, it definitely affects, uh, you know, financially. It, it has uh, big repercussions, and also emotionally. You know, it, it hurts. It's kind of like someone, uh, you know, breaking into your house and, and you know, sitting around on your on your couch watching television. Right? Like you're going to feel a little violated. Uh, so with Direct Connect, you know, you're you're you're, you're cutting out all the um, the the craziness of the internet. You're connecting directly with businesses, businesses that you work with, businesses that you trust. You know, so. Um, you, there's, there's a certain uh, a hope that, you know, that, that you know, a lot of the, the malicious activity that's out on the internet is going to be significantly cut down by, by peering directly with these. So if you talk about points. the perspective from, from the service providers, we talk to customers all the time and they're putting in Salesforce and they're putting in Zendesk and they're using these tools, but you've worked on the service provider side, the applications right. that are delivering via the cloud. Um, how have expectations changed? How, how important is this direct connect for companies like Zendesk, companies like Salesforce, because obviously revenue and customer service, yeah. to be able to direct connect into your clients to deliver service? Yes, I mean, it, it's, we, we, I mean, we exist on the internet, right? So uh, if customers are unable to connect to us, then you know, that, that's, that's major problems for our customers, right? You know, we're, we're certainly not, um, going to meet SLAs, you know, we're not going to be able to provide the, 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 the top tier uh, availability that we want to provide for our customers. So if we're able to connect directly with our customers and, uh, you know, cut out any sort of instability on the internet or any malicious uh, activity on the internet, it's an absolute advantage to our business. And do you provide any financial incentives or, or other types of, of incentives to your customers to say, hey, this is a, an option you should consider? You know, we strongly suggest it, or, or again, maybe there's either carrots or um, sticks to help uh, encourage so, that, or is that no, no, kind of unspoken, it's, it's kind of there, we don't really Yeah, I mean, as, as far as any sort of uh, financial incentives or anything like that, we, we really haven't. I mean, it's, it's more, uh, from my perspective, it's more for the benefit of, uh, you know, connectivity for not only Zendesk, but Zendesk customers, and the applications that Zendesk uses to, to keep the lights on, so. If there is any sort of financial uh, give and take anywhere, you know, it, it, that, that's probably the least of my concerns. Um, I'm more concerned with providing uh, performance. So talk about the internet, obviously, was an alternative for the old way. I mean, talk about the transition from the old end-to-end -end architecture from the network 90s, back in the 90s, yeah, go to a remote office, we had to put a box out there, and then the internet became nice backhaul or transit right. to, for, for, for folks. 
and then now we're back to these secure connections. Talk about that, why, what happened? Cost, was it cost was the issue? What was the driver between people moving from direct connections to the internet to now back? So I mean, uh, it, what people, what, what enterprises were using you know, back in the 90s, I don't, I don't think can necessarily be compared to what we're doing today. Uh, reason being is because you know everyone you know bought software. They you know bought software licenses, installed it in a server in their data center, and everything was there, right? Um, but then you know there's also the hiring of those those team members to you know uh, service that one application, blah blah blah. And then you know with SaaS, I mean the reason why it's it's such a big uh, big market these days is because it, it for Zendesk at least, I mean it takes an hour to set up the Zendesk. Uh, you're, you're up and running with a customer service platform, you know, in, in, in no time, you know, as opposed to uh, days, months, weeks, you know, uh, however long it takes for, you know, your project management team to, to coordinate efforts to install any sort of uh, software platforms inside your data center. Uh, you know, SaaS, SaaS, you know, brings it down from, you know, months of project planning and all that stuff to, to literally hours. So there, uh, you know, the, now with with that being said, there's now all of a sudden your your enterprise has a huge reliance on the internet, right? So, again, going back to um, you know the, the 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 craziness of the internet, and you know everyone's using the internet for various purposes. Traffic's going here, there, the and and everywhere. Um, and so you you know you're you're when you, your enterprise is relying on these SaaS applications, if there's anything that disrupts that. Your your company's you know especially if it's you know if it's a critical financial software or, or you know uh, customer service software where it helps your customers connect to you, uh, effectively you, you your 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 business is down right. So uh, what Direct Connect brings is it's it's not really a step backwards or you know revisiting the past or anything. It's just it's a, a new way of, of thinking and it's a new way of connecting to your applications. It's basically you know the old school idea of having an application run inside your data center. You know, over over a network that's within your within your control. Now you're you're still you're, it's, it kind of gives you the best of both worlds because you're still able to use these SaaS applications, but you're still the network is still uh, you know somewhat under your control. Yeah. So it's Let's talk about the trade off Some people will some just play devil's advocate here. Yeah. Well, hey, should we, you know you know what the internet trends is dropping like a costs are dropping really low. I can just off shift off shift some of the savings into better engineering. So. I'm going to pass on console. What's the hidden cost okay, so, in that shift? So in traditional peering, uh, I, 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 I admit there's a huge cost for it. Uh, so for companies uh, like Zendesk that live on the internet, uh, it makes sense for us to, to build into uh, internet fabrics and peer with you know, whoever we can peer with on these internet fabrics. And, and the cost is just the, the, the cost associated with doing business, right? So, but if you're an enterprise, I, I'll admit, yeah, it, it probably doesn't make financial sense for you to go and build into the various fabrics around the world just to connect to these, these various uh, applications that you use. What Consul is, is uh, proposing to do is break down that, that barrier to entry for enterprises and make it cost effective for them to, to get onto these peering fabrics and peer with you know, all the, the, the companies that they use uh, on a daily basis. So give an example of, of when someone qualifies as a direct peering connection. Is it API based stuff? Is it just joint application support? Customer, I mean, what are some of the examples where you could, would, the direct connection would be Value. Uh, so, I mean, if, if you're using, moving uh, any any amount of data on a daily basis to a particular organization, it makes sense to peer. Uh, it, it, I, I think the more companies that you can peer with, the better. I mean, even if you're sending you know tiny amounts of traffic to a particular uh, you know uh, application or, or, or pulling down data, um, even if it's minute amounts, you're still you know if there's still a reliance on, yeah. on uh, maintaining connectivity to that that particular entity. And it's absolutely important to, to have direct. Like connect. Dropbox is probably a good example, right? Yeah. I mean, hey, I'm using file sharing service. Yeah. yeah. Just create an SLA. Why have it out in the cloud? Exactly. And kind of out in the wild. Yeah. And and so for a company like Dropbox and, and for Zendesk, I mean, if we're if we're able to connect over these, uh, you know, these private lines uh, to our customers, it, it's less that we have to worry about our SLA. We know that the network portion is one piece that can be taken out. You know, then then it's just you know maintaining the application and making sure that our servers and services are running. You know, the beautiful thing about cloud, we cover the cloud stuff pretty heavily, and one of the things that the trend always seems to be pointing to is freeing up time for other innovations. So yes, let's just take yes. that, that point. Okay, let's just say, okay, hey, you know what? I've got a customer, we're, chain, we're sharing you know, 50 megabits per second, staying per day, bigger customer. Now, 
What does that mean for your staff in terms of creativity? What do you guys do with all that, I won't say all that free time, <laughs> yeah. but, but you know what I'm saying. What, what, where's the innovation side of it? Okay, cost, I get that, and the security, the hidden costs and DDoS, all that stuff, is probably pretty large and you can justify that pretty right. quickly. Where's the upside on the, uh, the innovation? Uh, the upside on the innovation, I mean, it's exactly uh, what, what you were just uh, referring to. I mean, the, those points about DDoS and all that stuff, I mean, that, that's, we, we have a part of our team currently that, I mean, that's all they're working on is, is DDoS mitigation strategies. You know, in, instead of uh, being able to automate uh, capacity builds and stuff like that, a lot of our time is spent on, 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 on DDoS and firefighting. Um, and so, if, I mean, it, it's, it's that small portion that it consumes a lot of our time, you know, and uh, for the most part, a lot of our network out, outages aren't self-inflicted. You know, it, it's, it's stuff that's going out on the internet. It's security issues that we're worried about. Um, so, if, I mean, if we can, even uh, you know, by the, the the smallest amount, just uh, you know, get some of that free time back to to look towards automation, you know, it's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, it, it, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it just makes sense for us. So. How bad is the DDoS stuff out there? Give us some color between like, I mean, how freaking bad is it? And people say, oh, DDoS. I mean, Bill Norton was kind of sharing some some color on that. What's your take on it? It's bad, um, it's bad, and especially for uh, companies that are, are multi-tenancy uh, like Zendesk. I mean, it's, it's few and far between that the, the, the hosting companies are actually the targets. It's usually their customers, you know. And we have a lot of uh, customers from various industries, and, um, and, and one of those industries that, we're, we're, uh, uh, that we host it's, is, is the gaming industry. And uh, you, know, you have a lot of kids out there that you know, they're upset with this particular gaming company, and so they, you know, they attack them. And as collateral damage, you know, we feel the pain points. Um, and, it, and it's increasing, you know, and, and it's, uh, you know, when I first started working at Zendes, you know, we get one maybe, uh, you know, few and, far, few and far between, once every six months or so. Um, but, you know, as, as time is progressing, you know, it's happening a lot more frequently, and uh, enough so that, you know, I, I certainly lose, lose sleep over it. And, you know, uh, like I mentioned, we have, we have guys on our team that are just dedicated to, to working on DDoS mitigation at this point. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely affecting us. It affects our business. You know, everyone in the entire organization is well aware of, of the effects of DDoS and, and we love the term DevOps, but since it's an ops kind of show, it's ops dev. That's how you look at it, right? Right, right. Which side of the room you're on? So the ops side is really critical in this whole new app developer market. Right. What's your take on that? As you look up the stack and you you see demand, right? Hey, I want programmable infrastructure. Right. I mean, you guys aren't against that, obviously, no, but no. people are like, hey, you know. If I take away free time, I got to create a program, programmable infrastructure. Does this help in any way with console? Create more, more to engineering around that. I mean, what, and what's your view about DevOps and Ops Dev? Uh, I mean, it's uh, the, the whole um, the, the, the whole DevOps thing. I mean, it's it's not a fad. I mean, even the largest enterprises are, are moving to to the DevOps um, methodology just to to. You know, I mean, it, you get. The software out quicker, you know, a lot quicker with with the DevOps mm -hmm. uh, methodology, um, and so and with with all the automation stuff and, and APIs and all that stuff, you know, any any bit that we can leverage to to not have to manually uh, go through any sort of process, you know, anything, yeah. anytime we could click a button <laughs> and fix something, you know, we're, we're going to absolutely leverage that automation, yeah. service cataloging, all that good stuff. Nice. Yeah. You hear about that? Yeah. Okay. Well, on DevOps, one thing is resilience. Yes. I mean, um, um, agile, I should say, agile's thing. Resilience is what networks should be. Right. Where does this help with console, and the conversations here at Console Connect, make the networks more resilient? What, what specifically can you share that's more resilient about some um, of these new features? So, I mean, with console, I mean, there's a, in, in traditional peering, um, you know, that you have to, there's a lot of manual intervention involved. You know, you have to figure out which cola you're going to build into, which, uh, you know, which customers or which, uh, um, which applications you want to target to peer with, right? And then so you have to build into those data centers and it could take weeks, months to, to actually get, uh, you know, your equipment in there and then you have to worry about private lines and all that stuff. Um, with console, you, can, you connect to the, the IX environment um, and you have an entire catalog of various customers that are also connected and you say, hey, I, I, you know, I know that we use this company, I want to peer with them. At the click of a button, you, you're on their, their, uh, their, their social media page via console. And so you can see you know, exactly what, the, who, you can actually see who the peer coordinator is that you're chatting with. You know, there's, there's a um, kind of a uh, LinkedIn type profile on, on the engineers and the engineering team and also the company and what they do. And so you can just click on a button and say, hey, I want to peer with you. 
Um, and once they accept, I mean, you're, you're up and running. It's like a period. social network meets networking. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely, yes. Real networking. Real, Real networking. networking. Real networking. <laughs> well, you know, you got someone on the other end, any kind of questions, obviously. Yeah, and so, and, and so the, and there's also a lot of built-in um, data. Um, so a lot of times when you're working with peering coordinators, you know, you have to say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm providing X amount of routes, this is my bandwidth, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so, I mean, if you forget any of that information, they're going to come back and say, hey, what, you know, what, what's the criteria on this, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, you know, with, with console, all that information is automatically populated for you, and you can obviously adjust it, but it, it just makes the interaction a lot lot easier. And with being able to see, uh, you know, who was on the other end of this request, you know, it, it, it adds a, a human touch to it. Final question for you is, what's this event about? For the people who aren't here uh, that are watching this video, what's the big aha in this event? Why is Console Connect 2015 important? Uh, why is it why is it important? Because it it lowers the, the barrier of entry uh, to uh, the, the peering world, and for for businesses, uh, as I previously mentioned, for businesses that uh, rely on the internet to you know to, to run their business and, and and provide services out on the internet, um, it's it, it's being able to, to peer uh, without having to build out a peering infrastructure. I mean that, that's paramount. You know it, it brings down. Uh, the cost brings down the barrier to entry. You don't have you don't have to have an expert level network engineering team to be able to to peer with businesses uh, around the, around the world. Versus the old days of provisioning a circle, all that uh, hard absolutely, yeah. plumbing that yeah, would have to yeah. be connected. So yeah, I mean basically you just uh, have a connection to IX, and then from there you're you're able to connect to whoever you want. All right, thanks for sharing your insight. Yeah, really absolutely. appreciate it. Yeah, Down thanks. the trenches, ops dev, one click of a button, you're peering. Social network of a network. <laughs> Great stuff here at Console. We'll be right back with more live in San Francisco with a short break.